a complete step-by-step -step guide into conventional loans and conventional loan requirements in 2021. So thanks for joining me guys for another episode of More About Mortgages. My name is Ian Moore. I'm a loan officer here with Premier Mortgage Lending. And thanks for joining me for another episode. I appreciate you guys. And in this episode, we're going to be touching base on conventional loans and the conventional loan requirements now that we're into 2021. Obviously, COVID had some impact on the mortgage lending business and different loan programs out there. And today, in this episode, we're going to get into and dive right into how conventional loans have been impacted from COVID and any new requirements in general now that we're into 2021. So conventional loans, guys, in general, conventional loans out of the three different, I'm sorry, out of the four loan types out there, conventional loans are not backed or insured by a government agency. They're actually backed and insured by private lending institutions. Unlike any other mortgage loan out there, VA, USDA, or FHA, which are all backed and insured through government enterprises, private conventional loans are not and ultimately are provided financing through and funded by private lenders. And what those private lenders do is sell those loans as mortgage-backed securities on the secondary mortgage market to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. I won't get too much into that nonsense because that's a lot of information that I know you guys necessarily don't necessarily need or want to hear. Um, however, that's the essence of a conventional loan. It's a private lender, not a government enterprise, and ultimately uh, they're purchased loans on the secondary mortgage market through Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. And that's what determines whether or not a conventional loan is conforming or not. If it conforms within Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac's guidelines to what they're, they'll purchase as mortgages on the secondary mortgage market, i.e. any loan between 620 and 680 FICO goes in this box, any loan with 5% down and, and FICO scores between 680 and 720 goes in this box and they'll purchase this, they'll not, they won't purchase that, et cetera, et cetera. That's sort of the, the long and short of it of how Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac purchase loans on the secondary mortgage market. So. The 20% down is a complete myth with conventional loans, guys. We go as low as 5% down for a, per, for a down payment on a conventional loan, 3% down for conventional loans as a first time home buyer, or if you qualify for what's called Home Possible through Freddie Mac or Home Ready through Fannie Mae, it's a conventional loan add on that enables you know, first time home buyers and home buyers that qualify uh, with income limitations and really just income limitations as far as uh, making a certain amount of money or less in order to qualify for this home possible home ready program. So that will get you in the door with 3% down, but minimally average 5% down for a down payment on a conventional loan, guys. 20% down is just a myth and you do not, nor will you ever need 20% down to purchase a home. You can purchase a primary residence, a second home or vacation home, or even an investment property using conventional loans. So regardless of the type of home you're purchasing, we can make it happen with a conventional loan as long as it's four units or less. So some of the COVID changes that have taken effect uh, since you know, February of last year, um, artificially raised credit score overlays through lenders across the country. I've seen you know, in a wide span, uh, almost every mortgage lender out there has increased their minimum credit score requirement for all loan types, but conventional loans in particular, just because they're the most common and most popular loan program out there. Typically pre-COVID, you're looking at 620 or higher in order to qualify conventional. Nowadays, we're looking at 640. Some lenders are 660. Right now here at Premier Mortgage Lending, our minimum credit score requirement is 640 for conventional loans. And um, even with a 640 or higher, you know, we'll still get you a great rate. Ultimately, uh, if you're self-employed trying to qualify for a conventional loan and buying a house or refinancing, um, you're going to need a year to date profit and loss. If the profit and loss that you're submitting to your loan officer is undated, then ultimately you will need to provide an additional three months of business bank statements. So try to get that profit and loss dated and signed by your accountant if you can, because that'll make a lot less work for you. Um, future work. This is a big one I encounter regularly with conventional loans and other loan products. If somebody is applying for a loan or purchasing a house and trying to use income from a future job that they don't start, um, it really depends lender to lender with conventional loans. Some lenders will allow income 180 days after closing. Some lenders, like us in particular, were 90 days out. If you start your new job and will start collecting that income from that new job within 90 days of closing, we can use it. Anything past 90 days, unfortunately, we, aren't, we won't be able to use towards qualifying. Um, however, like I said, it differs lender to lender out there. The most I've ever seen is about 180 days, and that was only in one particular case a few years back. So 
Not sure if any lenders are still operating under those circumstances. Down payment, I've already touched on 5% minimum down payment typically, unless you're doing 3% as a first time home buyer or you qualify and your income is under the limit for home ready or home possible. Closing costs are pretty standard, same as other loan programs. Typical closing costs on a conventional loan are around three to 4% of the purchase price. But you know, ultimately, we can minimize those as much as possible for you to get you into your new house as efficiently and affordably as possible. So I touched on credit score requirements just briefly already. You know, with the 620 pre-COVID minimum credit score, now most lenders looking 640, 660. 680 with conventional loans tends to be that threshold credit score that makes a conventional loan worthwhile to pursue for borrowers um, or not. So if you're at 680 or below, Another loan program, say for instance, an FHA loan might make the most sense for you, where if you're at 680 or above qualifying credit score, uh, you know, a conventional loan will be the way to go. And I'll tell you the reason for that, guys, just real quickly here, and what kind of makes the difference between a conventional loan and an FHA loan when qualifying for a mortgage will really boil down to what your FICO score is. If it's at 680 or higher, your mortgage insurance premium or PMI with your conventional loan will be equal to or less than what it would be with your FHA. Because with FHA loans, your mortgage insurance premium is the same across the board, no matter what. It's 0.85% of the loan amount divided by 12 and added to the monthly payment. With a conventional loan at 680 or higher credit, you know, with a 680 qualifying FICO score, your mortgage insurance premium might be 0.75 divided by 12 and added to the monthly payment. Where you're, where at, you know, say a 720 or higher FICO score, your mortgage insurance premium, say at 5% down, even if you're only putting 5% down, could be as low as, you know, 0.35% of the loan amount. That's a substantial difference compared to 0.85% with FHA, and why that person at 720 FICO score should absolutely use a conventional loan unless they have mitigating factors or, you know, their debt to income ratio is too high to qualify for conventional or something along those lines. However. That is really the essence of the, the main difference between the two loans, conventional and FHA, is ultimately how much you'll pay for PMI through conventional if you're putting less than 20% down compared to what you would pay through FHA's uh, predetermined 0.85% annual mortgage insurance premium. So that is really what it boils down to. And um, you know, with conventional loan requirements, typically two years of credit history is needed. Uh, so if you have two years of stable credit history when we run your credit, that'll be enough. I actually have worked with, with applicants before or buyers before who have had no credit. They didn't have poor credit, they had no credit, meaning they didn't have enough trade lines in the past or enough history through their, um, you know, through their credit accounts to provide actual scores on. That means Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax will either have like an NA reporting as their score or a 1009, I believe it is. Um, this means that they don't have enough information to actually calculate a credit score. That's a better option to have than having poor credit because I can work with having no credit to help you build that credit and get yourself into a score um, faster than I can help you repair damaged credit. I can do both, but ultimately helping you build credit from no credit is ultimately going to help you get in to your new home faster uh, because we can set you up with a pretty quick game plan to build some credit in a short period of time. And that way when we do go to run your scores and Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax do populate scores for you, right away you'll be 680 or higher, almost always. So that's something to keep in mind if you're somebody out there who's afraid or hesitant to purchase a new home or pull the trigger on a home because you don't have enough credit in your mind to qualify. Um, credit events is a big one that I get asked a lot about. You know, deed in lieu or for foreclosure or short sale. Four years, you're looking from the discharge date of that um, short sale or deed in lieu or foreclosure to qualify for a conventional loan. So if that has happened to you guys, you're looking at at least a four year period before you can ever qualify to use a conventional loan again. Foreclosure in general, seven years. Seven years from the discharge date you're gonna need in order to qualify for a conventional loan. Bankruptcies, chapter seven, chapter 13, pretty standard stuff. Chapter seven years from the discharge date, four years out. Chapter 13, you're only looking at two years out. Student loans, student loans are a big aspect of any mortgage loan and qualifying for any mortgage out there. Um, right now, especially here in 2021, However, with student loans and conventional loans, they're pretty standard you know, across the board. They can adjust and change the amount of you know, buying power that you have or somebody can have drastically and will determine whether or not you'll 
qualify for a purchase price of 500,000 or a purchase price of 250,000. Uh, because I'll tell you why. With Fannie Mae, they require you to use 1% of the outstanding balance of student loan debt that you have as the monthly payment. Therefore, Fannie Mae states that if you have two student loan accounts, one of them for $30,000 and another one for $20,000, the lender needs to use $300 and $200 as the monthly payment for those student loan accounts, even if they're in deferment and you're not paying a single penny on a monthly basis to those accounts. Because in the past, people that have had student loans in deferment have qualified for loans, then those student loan repayment plan has kicked in and act, been activated, therefore they weren't able to make their mortgage payments because they had student loan debt to pay on top of their mortgage. They became um, you know, unable to make their payment and ultimately defaulted on their mortgage. But this happened on a wide scale across the country, which caused Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to start implementing new regulations and guidelines for student loans. And here we are. In 2021, Fannie Mae is requiring to use 1% of the outstanding balance, even if in deferment. Freddie Mac, however, allows us as lenders to use a half a percent of that total balance as the monthly payment. So with Fannie Mae, you'd be looking at a $300 and a $200 a month payment for those respective student loan accounts compared to Freddie Mac where you'd be looking at $150 for the $30,000 account and $100 for the $20,000 student loan account. So we can cut those monthly payments that obviously get included in your debt to income ratio right in half by going with Freddie Mac. Unfortunately, with student loans nowadays, income-based repayment is not something that is allowed. In the past, income-based repayment has been something that you could utilize with student loans. Nowadays, not so much. Freddie Mac, half a percent. Fannie Mae, full percent needs to be used and counted towards qualifying. And ultimately, your debt-to-income ratio. Conventional loans, pretty standard interest rates across the board. It depends, obviously, on the, you know, the lender's margin and what their compensation looks like. But ultimately, with conventional loans, the rates are pretty standard and similar to uh, you know, FHA. They might be slightly higher than FHA, but right now, conventional loans here in the second quarter of 2021, interest rates are looking still great, 2.99, 2.875 even, um, and are still at historic lows. So buying a house or refinancing is, is a great thing to do while rates are this low, guys. So with conventional loans, there's no upfront mortgage insurance premium. Unlike with FHA, where you pay a 1.75% upfront mortgage insurance premium that can be added and rolled into your loan amount, with conventional loans, you don't have that. There is none, which is another reason and adds another layer to why a conventional loan is by far superior loan product than FHA if you could qualify for it. You're not paying 1.75% of that purchase price and having that added to your loan amount at the end of the day um, and already going into your house with more uh, added to your loan amount than what your actual loan is. So that's never a good thing. With conventional loans also, once you, say you purchase a home and you pay 5% down, the market heats up, property values increase, the, the value of your home gets inflated a little bit, and uh, you now have 20% equity. You can request to have your PMI removed because paying less than 20% down when you purchase the house means you'll pay PMI. Depending on what your credit score is at that time that you bought the house will determine your monthly PMI. But ultimately, if you don't want to refinance, you can ask your lender, say, hey, I'm at 20% equity right now. I'd like to remove my PMI. They'll send an appraiser out there to inspect and appraise the home, make sure you are truly at 20% equity. And if so, they can remove the PMI for you. Guys, just to be honest, I've, I've never even heard of one instance where this has happened because anybody that's ever had a chance to remove their PMI, they've likely just reached out to refinance because at that point in time, it's, you're gonna need it. If you're gonna pay for an appraisal, you might as well just refinance in general uh, because that's typically the only out-of-pocket cost a lot of people will have when refinancing. And if you're gonna pay that appraisal cost regardless, you might as well take advantage and get a lower interest rate and maybe a, a bit more uh, affordable monthly payment while you're at it. So where I mentioned earlier, guys, conventional loans, buying a house, paying 20% down or more means that you can avoid paying any PMI or private mortgage insurance. If you pay 20% down, uh, if you pay less than 20% down, I'm sorry, you will pay mortgage insurance, which will be based on a, a premium that gets determined through your credit score and other qualifying aspects. However, the reason that is, guys, is all mortgages are originated and underwritten based on your ability to repay that loan. And it's all risk-based. Every lender and underwriter looks at a loan as how much risk is involved with loaning that borrower that, 
that money to purchase that home or refinance that existing mortgage loan. So when it comes to risk, 20% down or more, the lender and underwriter looks at it as less of a risk. You're contributing more of your personal assets to that purchase and that transaction. So they're, they're obviously going to look at it as having a less risk involved lending you that money. Putting 5% down or 3% down compared to a 20% down payment means there's far more risk involved as the lender lending you that money. You know, you're only contributing 3% of your own funds, which you can still qualify for and get into a new home affordably that way, but you will pay private mortgage insurance or PMI because of the higher risk that gets included with your loan, having that only three, having only 3% or 5% as your down payment. But that is, that is the reason, guys, why 20% down or less requires PMI, 20% or more, you don't have to pay it, and ultimately are less of a risk in the eyes of the underwriter. I already touched on this a little bit, guys, but two to four unit properties are completely acceptable with conventional loans. It just has to be under four units. Secondary homes are absolutely acceptable as well. Investment properties too. Uh, investment properties typically require a 20% or more down payment. Like I just talked about, guys, you know, lenders always want a little bit more of an investment from the buyer with investment money-making properties because if you could purchase an investment property with say three or five percent down everybody would do it and everybody would own investment properties and be landlords and we'd have a lot more slumlords out there than we do already so keep that in mind that you need at least 20 percent of that purchase price to purchase an investment property so your landlord when they bought that place originally paid at least 20 percent down for it second homes vacation homes like i said completely acceptable required down payment is typically around 10 percent so not as much as an investment property, but if you already own a primary residence and are looking to expand your real estate portfolio and get yourself a second home or a vacation home, maybe on the water somewhere, you're, you'll need 10% or more of the purchase price to put down on that house. But ultimately that's not too bad. If you're buying yourself a second lake house, you likely are doing well for yourself and can afford at least a 10% down payment to enjoy that beautiful second home. Uh, all loan programs out there have loan limits. Like it's no different from any other loan program. Conventional loans also have limits, and this is almost, or really the, you know, the standard as far as setting loan limits across the country is for conventional loans. Um, and right now, as of this year, there was an increase in 2021. We're now up to a new minimum conforming loan limit of $548,250. That's an increase from a couple years ago, it was at 517 to last year it went to 523. So it's actually continued to go up steadily here, which you know it, it needs to. You know, as a loan officer uh, myself here that handles a lot of conventional loans in and around New England, um, there are certain areas that are capped off at loan limits that have you know don't make sense. The, the the average house gets sold at a certain level, like for instance, Bedford, New Hampshire, you know, has a conforming loan limit of 548,250. It doesn't allow the high balance conforming loan limits that other areas in New England allow for. Um, and there's plenty of homes in Bedford that are being sold for well over six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars, if not a million dollars, but the conforming loan limit is 548,250. So that means the difference there needs to be through the down payment. That's what the, that's what the mortgage lending world has been like for the past year, 12 months. Um, however, now that we're starting to get out of the, you know, the COVID nightmare we've been in for the past 18 months, new programs or old programs that went away are starting to come back. New programs are coming out and being generated and issued. Um, and as of last month, the new jumbo prime loan is back up to $2 million. So people buying even in Bedford, New Hampshire can utilize the jumbo prime loan through, uh, you know, a lot of lenders, us in particular, um, and we'll get you a great rate with that low down payment. So however, guys, if you're going to use that jumbo prime loan or a jumbo loan in particular, jumbo loans are also considered non-conforming loans, meaning they do not conform to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac's guidelines uh, set forth for them to purchase mortgage backed securities on the secondary mortgage market, those jumbo or non conforming loans would never fit into those conforming boxes. But it'll still enable you to get a loan amount so that you're not having to break the bank on your down payment to purchase your new home because the loan limit puts you in between a rock and a hard place, forcing you to pay $200,000 out of pocket for your down payment. This way, at least you'll get a great, you know fixed rate loan all the way up to the amount that you need it to without having to break your bank. So guys, real estate agents, and we're just nearly finishing up now here, almost, almost, almost at the end, but with appraisals, 
real estate agents really look at conventional appraisals as a superior loan product and you know product in general over FHA or VA or USDA even appraisals. And the reason for that is that conventional appraisals are always a little bit less stringent. Um, you know, appraisers aren't going to make the, the, the seller of that home repair uh, a handrail if a certain set of stairs doesn't have a handrail or they're not going to make you, you know, patch up and, and repair all chipping, peeling paint in the, you know, throughout the house where FHA, you will need to do that or you will need to install that handrail. So appraisals are, our appraisals are a little bit more lenient with conventional loans than they are with FHA, VA or USDA. So that's why uh, a seller's agent might guide their seller to accept an offer with a conventional loan over another offer from a buyer who may be using a VA, USDA or FHA loan because the appraisal will go smoother and ultimately means that seller is not going to have to pay any money to complete repairs before they can close on that sale. So with conventional loans, guys, employment's pretty standard as well. Two year stable history of employment doesn't need to be at the same job. If you are in the same field, it's definitely going to give you a boost as far as qualifying in the eyes of the underwriter to show that you're in the same field and have been for two years or more. Even if you've moved jobs frequently throughout that same field, as long as you can show that there's been justifiable reasons for you to change jobs, that's okay. If it's a pay increase or you move locations or you know something happened in your family and you needed to work somewhere else, whatever. As long as you're in that same field, that's fine and can provide two years of stable employment, you're good to go. Even if you have changed jobs fairly frequently but not in the same field, typically around 30 days so you can provide 30 days of pay stubs will be all we need in order to get you qualified for a conventional loan. So with conventional loans guys and debt to income, when I did my FHA video on the FHA 2021 loan requirements, we touched on debt to income and the max ratios that you're allowed to to, to have when purchasing or refinancing. Conventional loans have the same sort of characteristics as far as requirements, but allow for a debt to income ratio no higher than 49.99%. So if 49.99% of your monthly income is going to have to go to that mortgage payment, you'll be okay. Any more than that, you won't be able to qualify. We'll need to have you pay off some debt or move some things around in order to get into a qualifying position. A seller credit or seller concessions, the amount of money the seller can pay towards your closing costs as the buyer depends on the uh, down payment that you're making. With conventional loans, less than 10% down, the seller can pay 3% of your closing costs. On a conventional loan paying 10% or, or more down, uh, the seller can contribute 6% of your closing costs. And if you're paying 25% or more down, the seller can pay upwards of 9% of your closing costs. And that three, six and 9% is off of the purchase price. So keep that in mind guys, if you're buying a house and hoping that the seller will pay your closing costs for you. Conventional loans are always easier when dealing with foreclosed properties. You're the easiest loan product in general across the board, regardless of whether it's a foreclosure. When dealing with foreclosures, a conventional loan will undoubtedly be the way to go, whether you're buying or selling. Conventional loans also have um, renovation loans. We, you know, I won't get too much into that. I'll save that for another video. But if you are looking to do some repairs on your already existing property or you're buying a house that needs a little bit of, you know, uh, TLC, you can use a conventional loan through Homestyle Renovation Ready. Uh, unlike FHA or VA, there's no streamlined options with conventional refinancing. Streamline is no appraisal, no income documentation, no qualifying that way. Um, and they're a little bit quicker, more streamlined of a process hence why they're called streamlines. But with conventional loans, the refis are all pretty standard across the board. Um, you know, a lot of times we can get a property inspection waiver, so you won't even have to pay for an appraisal, which a lot of times is the only out-of-pocket cost on a refinance, meaning you can get a lower rate, more affordable monthly payment without paying a single dollar out-of-pocket. So on the, uh, on the chart here next to me, you'll see a cost comparison, guys, with a 720 qualifying FICO score. It shows 3% down conventional conforming loan next to a 3% home ready, next to a 3% uh, home possible loan or home possible home ready will be in the same column. And then next to that shows a 5% down conforming conventional loan next to an FHA loan to follow. So 3% down conforming, 5% down conforming, 3% down home ready, home possible conventional. And then next to those is FHA. And it will show you a 720 FICO score with the same purchase price and the different loan characteristics. So you can see for yourself based on your qualifying aspects, what loan program might make the most sense for you. Now that we're in the second quarter of 2021, if you can qualify for it, guys, conventional loans are always the way to go, and we'll be happy to help you here at Premier Mortgage Lending. I appreciate you guys joining me for another episode. I know this one was also a little bit long-winded. I just wanted to get all the requirements out there for these conventional loans now that we're halfway through 2021. So thanks for joining me, guys. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you soon.